This news update is brought to you by. with Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today. This is the Barbados Today evening update for Thursday, November the 13th, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. A warm welcome to you. Our top story, Prime Minister Frandel Stewart is being asked to intervene to save the sugar industry from disaster. The call comes in the light of a startling revelation made last week by Minister of Agriculture Dr. David Estwick in an interview with Barbados Today that all major investors had pulled out of the government's U.S. $250 million sugar industry restructuring program. Construction on a multi-purpose factory at Andrew St. Joseph is scheduled to start January next year as part of the restructuring. The Barbados Sugar Industry Limited, which represents independent farmers, is worried about the impact a collapse could have on its members and on the country as a whole. It has also joined with the Barbados Workers' Union in calling on the Prime Minister to step in. Meantime, government says it is moving full steam ahead to attain its sustainable energy targets. Speaking at the opening of the fourth Caribbean Sustainable Energy Forum this morning, Senator Darcy Boyce revealed that renewed focus is being placed on the sector, especially in light of the economic challenges facing the country. He says emphasis is being placed on sustainable energy generation, which he hopes will also create employment opportunities. Barbados recognizes that this renewed and intensified focus on energy efficiency and renewable energy is important to reducing our economic vulnerability because it reduces the economic risks associated with importing fuel. And it also adds to the size of the economy by reducing imports and creating employment. Implementation of our sustainable energy roadmap will also provide us with the opportunity to further build up our economic resilience through economic growth by helping us to remove or reduce a number of other constraints, such as the constraints on land and the constraints on water. There's been no firm decision taken on how many Scotiabank workers in Barbados will go home. That's according to a statement issued by the bank today, following yesterday's comments made by the president of the Human Resource Management Association of Barbados, Glenda Jilts, that more than 200 of the local branch employees could be affected by Scotia's proposed restructuring exercise. Speaking on the sidelines of a human resource symposium yesterday, just had this to say. I don't have numbers at, at, at the top of my head right now, but I know that, for example, a, a place closer by with branches across Barbados, certainly you're concerned about that because that could be more than a 200 people or more. And those things concern us because we don't have the jobs up there that uh, would really pull those people in. So, again, I go back to make sure that people are retrained and retooled that they can go and either become their own manager or join another organization. However, Scotia says the unrealistic numbers could only cause unnecessary panic and that the 200 figure was purely speculative and not based on factual information. There's a call for three more outstanding Barbadians to be added to the National Heroes list. And historian Dr. Henderson Carter is getting support from independent Senator Professor Emeritus Dr. Henry Fraser on that recommendation. He told officials attending the last of a two-part lecture series marking the 357th anniversary of Parliament, Dr. Carter made a case for Winter Crawford, Kenneth Wickham and T.T. Lewis to join the esteemed list. He said the trio formed part of a movement that shaped modern Barbados by standing up for the planter class. Professor Fraser agrees and he is hoping that officials consider the additions in time for next National Heroes Day. In sport, stop the blame game. Former West Indies opener Desmond Haynes says he doesn't want to get into the current impasse involving the West Indies cricket board and its players. 
but he's calling for all to unite in addressing the situation, which has seen the WICB falling out of favor with players and the Board of Control for Cricket in India. I would like to see some unity. I would like to see, you know, every. I would like to see we get we get it sorted um, from from all angles. You know, um, I would I would hope that um, you know we as a people would not look at a blaming game, but look at trying to find solutions. There's regional and international news after this short break. The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, November 20th to 23rd. Taste the culinary delights of top local and international chefs like Marcus Samuelson, Anne Burrell, Tyler Florence, Roger Mooking, Michael Hines, Dane Sadler, Daphne's Restaurant, and more. The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, 5th edition, November 20th to 23rd. Visit foodwinerum.com or contact Premier Event Services, Inc. at 435-0670. Get your tickets now at Wine World or Ticket in the region now, the chikungunya outbreak in Jamaica is sucking up blood bank supplies. The National Blood Transfusion Service is now facing a shortage and is asking people who have not been affected by the virus as well as suspected victims who have not shown any symptoms after a 28-day period to donate blood. Acting Director Dr. Veronica Taylor explained that the chikungunya outbreak had forced the deferral of several blood donors and cancellation of blood drives due to inadequate support. Further afield now, U.S. President Barack Obama is preparing to announce measures to prevent the deportation of 5 million undocumented immigrants. In a report citing administration officials, the New York Times reported today that as early as next week, Obama could redirect efforts of the nation's 12,000 immigration agents in order to avoid millions of possible deportations. The move would allow many parents of children who are U.S. citizens or legal residents to obtain work permits, thereby eliminating the threat of being discovered and separated from their families. Obama's plan would cover millions of undocumented people living in the United States for at least five years. But the White House is also considering a stricter plan that would benefit those who have lived in the country at least 10 years. Officials told the New York Times that deportations would still proceed for convicted criminals, foreigners who pose national security risks, and those who recently crossed the border illegally. That's where we end our Barbados Today evening update. We will be back again tomorrow morning. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper and email updates or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 online TV to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening. This news update is brought to you by...
with Barbados' largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any line prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today.